Yo, 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 what's up, party people? It's Monkey and Biggs coming to you live from the number one party spot in central Iowa. That's right, the Jordan Creek Mall Food Court. Holla! Is it really that popular, though? Biggs, I don't think they can hear you. You're going to have to lean in and scream. I think we sat at the smallest booth, so I can't even move my stomach. You're going to have to lean in and fucking scream. Literally scream. Hello. So I, I got some beef teriyaki at the food court. Biggs got some orange chicken. And uh, Biggs, what's your review? How is it? How is the orange chicken? It's actually really good. I was expecting less from a food court, but um, I think it might be the second best orange chicken I've had in Iowa. What would number one be? Hy-Vee. Hy-Vee, the, the grocery store, cooked by white people like you, Biggs? No, the one in Pleasant Hill is mainly ran by, I think, Vietnamese people. Oh, okay. So, so they're good at making Chinese food in Vietnam? Yeah, at least they're not American, right? <laughs> yeah, at least. We're not stealing their jobs. My beef teriyaki is fine. I wish I had fried rice like Biggs does. I'm not a big fan of this white rice bullshit. Oh. White white rice lives don't matter. If it ain't white, it ain't right. I want rice of color only. Ain't that right, Biggs? That's right, Biggs. Bye, everybody. <laughs> if you're ever in uh, central Iowa, don't bother going to Jordan Creek Mall. It fucking sucks. Bye, Biggs. Well, everybody, you've been waiting for it, and after a full month of work, Biggs is finally back to premiere the brand new Monkey and Biggs Show podcast theme song! Let's hear it! This is the theme song, and that's it. It took me a long time to figure out the notes. That's why you were gone for a month? And the lyrics were really hard to come up with. Like, I I wasn't sure where to go with it, you know, like... Hmm. I think we can workshop this a little bit. Would you like to hear some of my theme song suggestions? Now, are there any swear words that might start with the letter N in them? (laughs) That is not a swear, first of all. We invented it. We can use it however (laughs) we damn well please. (laughs) Now, that is a hot take. Speaking of hot take, here is a hot take of our new theme song. Here's how it goes. We're gonna take you back to the past to record a shitty podcast. We'd rather have a buffalo take a diarrhea dump in his ear. We'd rather eat the rotten asshole of Biggs's mom than gun it with beer. He's the biggest podcaster you've ever heard. (laughs) He's the monkey (laughs) Nintendo nerd. It's still going. You like that song? I I wrote it myself. The only issue is we got to make sure we don't blast too far in the past. Otherwise, the channel could get deleted. And a shitty game that sucks ass. What are your thoughts on having a, a buffalo diarrhea dump in your ear? Would you rather have that or eat your mom's rotten asshole if you had you know, to choose? If you the, had to the, choose! The question is, were these literal lyrics or were there was there like a hidden meaning behind them? No, I think they were pretty literal. <laughs> oh, uh, there's no third option. Would you rather have I feel a like buffalo diarrhea dump in your ear or eat your mom's rotten asshole, Biggs? You cannot talk your way out of this one. You have but to choose. I feel like and whichever you choose, we're going to film you doing IRL. I feel like there's always a third option. Even with yeah, like, suicide yeah, is yeah, always yeah, yeah. the exactly. third option. So I'm going to go with the third option. I mean, I... I we can film that. A buffalo diary dump in your ear is not that bad. Sewer slide stream. We could do that on YouTube and get away with it. And then Hartsy Pratsy will narrate the whole thing. Yeah, he should probably, like, call the suicide hotline while I'm in the middle of thinking about it. But I'll, hey, hey I'll, guys, my my friend Biggs, he's going to I'll tell him himself. what to tell them, just so it's in his voice. Okay. Biggs, we promised last episode, among other things, that we among would... Us? Um, among, among us? Among us? <laughs> among us. Speaking of which, you did post a picture of your rotted out big toe on Twitter, and it did look like an Among Us. It is looking pretty sus. Uh, a lot of people thought the reason why we didn't do the show for a month was because your your toe got so infected that you died. Any? Any? No, that's what it looks like when it's healthy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is after all the infection and stuff is gone. 
Well, we promised we would do a little bit of Big Story, everybody's favorite segment where Biggs tells stories of yonder year, of his past, these true stories. And I wanted to hear a story about your mom being a huge fucking cunt. Because in my experience, she's a very funny and somewhat senile old lady. I did not get to go through like the, I don't get the Vietnam flashbacks when we talk about your mom. All my experiences wow. have been positive. I would like to hear one of these horror stories from your youth. Well, there's two things I have to say to that. Well, technically three with the story, but two things. One, parents are almost always going to be nicer in front of their kids' friends. Like, I, uh, I feel like our that's friend, true universally. Uh, our friend Mayo, his dad might have been a little too nice, a little yeah, too comfortable. The uh, whitey tidies with the beer in his hand. Yeah, can I? F- just f- people in. in the in the in the comment <laughs> section, when you visited your friend's house as young as seven years old, would their dad walk around wearing nothing but his tidy whitey underwear? Because I find that abhorrent. My my parents never did that shit. That's fucking crazy. When your friends are over walking around in your underwear, he had a five-year-old sister, dude. (laughs) What the fuck? Yeah, that was uh, some interesting times. A lot of not-so-fond memories from going over to his house. I mean, his dad only molested me a few times, so it wasn't that bad. What a lucky man. I could never swing that, you know? I was just too big for his taste. (laughs) Um, okay, uh, what was I going to... Oh, yeah, the other thing is, obviously, uh, people are always going to give their parents a worse rap than they probably actually are. Um, in her latter years... Yeah, like, is, I think uh, Casey Anthony's she, daughter really talked shit about her too much. That was the bitch she, that killed her daughter, yeah, right? Yeah, she couldn't... <laughs> but she, she died before she could speak. Anyways, <laughs> in her older years, my mother has gotten to be very laid back, and she's a very cool person to hang out with. I will admit what, that. What, does she listen to this show? Um, you don't gotta praise her that much. She doesn't listen well, to this no, shit. Well, no, like, these days... I don't think she does. If she did, she'd probably talk get, to get me pissed. more just because she'd yell at me for things, but... Um, One of these days, we have to trick her into being on the show even if we have to do it on speakerphone you know you know what she would probably honestly come on the show for if we talked about survivor oh yeah she's we a could do huge that. survivor fan we that's sh- probably we- the only way we could get her on the show we should hook up your mom with andy signor and have <laughs> have them do a survivor podcast oh man that would be great can you believe what tony did <laughs> so the story that that first popped into my mind when he reminded me about it today because i i actually did forget about this um so i actually told this story not long ago to somebody else and that's why it was like the freshest one what to your therapist <laughs> no it was to another friend and we were laughing about it <laughs> your but therapist is not your friend you have to pay to speak he, to them well i pay most of my friends to be my friends yeah so and I was I was gonna mention you're a little behind on your rent this month, Biggs. Oh, I gotta get you some nuggies to to, <laughs> fill up the, to pay up on rent. Um, so basically, uh, I'm gonna turn on the AC while you're doing that. I'm already hot. One morning while I was getting ready for school, I start hearing my my mother screaming and yelling at my my brother. What my, age groups is everybody in this story? I think I was in like. Ninth or tenth grade, and my oh, brother. So, so you were eight years old because you were in the advanced curriculum. At eight years old, you were in tenth grade because you were so smart. Yeah, sure. Um, <sighs> so my, <laughs> now I know how you feel. <laughs> so my brother was. Uh, he was probably in like your brother, sixth, your brother, and me, sixth grade or something like that. And he was always terrible when he was young. He he hasn't really changed well, much. Yeah, he still is terrible, but, but like. When it comes to sleep, if he doesn't get like 12 hours, he's like the grumpiest, most petty person on the planet. It's honestly ridiculous. You talking b Rai? Yeah. Okay. So, so we're like, I'm getting ready, I'm showering, getting ready for school, and he's in there throwing a fit because he didn't want to go. And like, this was almost like a daily recurrence, but you know, <laughs> thinking back, <laughs> Who maybe, wants to go to school in may, sixth grade? Maybe it makes sense that she was as mad, but... Oh, you're trying to have empathy for your mom now. Well, as you get older, you start to you start to think differently on like past things. Cause you're like, wow, maybe that was mm, different than no, I remember. No, I, I didn't ask to be born. I think all, <laughs> all of my tantrums were validated. So anyways, finally I went in there and I basically just yelled at him and said, just, just get ready, you know, whatever. We, we have like 20 minutes. We have plenty of time. I got her to calm down. 
And then it came down to like 10 minutes before we had to leave. And all he had to do was put his shoes on. And like, he couldn't tie his shoes in for whatever sixth reason. grade. Like, I don't know what it was. But she like started screaming at him like it was the end of the world. And like, you got to get him some sketchers with the Velcro on them. She, like, I don't even know. It was like next level. Like, she must have had something else like irritating her or something that day. But she was like literally bloody like blood curdling screams at him <laughs> to put and, on his shoes yeah and i walk in and i'm like just help him <laughs> literally if he can't tie him it takes less time for you to help him than to scream at him because then it's not going to get done so then she changes her anger to me and starts screaming <laughs> at me should not have gotten involved and like she starts like walking over to me with like this big stance like she's gonna swing or something i'm like then hit me. What are you doing? Like, what? <laughs> You're not helping us get out the door any faster. Please. I'll help him put on his shoes. No, he can do it himself. He should be able to tie his shoes. Which, yes, he should have been able to tie his shoes. I don't know why he couldn't. That he morning. only got 11 hours of sleep. Yeah, exactly. So, like... So, at this point in time, you're in eighth grade. Who... who no, I was who, in, like, ninth or tenth. I was okay, in high okay. school. Okay, okay. Who, at this point, b between you and your mom, who is in the higher weight class? Me. Okay, so she Already. does not stand a chance. Yeah, yeah. And she's also, like, 5'4", 5'3". Like. Well, okay, so you have three inches on her. Big whoop. I mean, for a, a small woman, like... She's not that small. <laughs> she birthed you. She has to have something <laughs> big going on well, down there. Well... We're, we're not even going to get into that. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so, uh, basically, it gets to the point where she's, like, literally in, like, a psychotic rage. <laughs> at you? At both of us. And, like, my other brother's just, like, standing over in the corner, like, what is even happening? Picking his nose. Yeah, because he's in, like, what, like, fourth grade, third grade, something like that. He's in super double special ed. <laughs> He was basically like a more autistic Dewey of our family. Uh, I would not compare your youngest brother to Dewey in any sense of the word. Your youngest brother is it is beyond. It's it's like it's as if Dewey was like a homunculus mixture with uh, the monster from the Goonies, and also had the IQ of maybe a newborn uh, ladybug. Like it's <laughs> wow. Okay. So, so anyways, she's like in this fit of rage and I literally just say, mom, why are you being such a psycho bitch? Uh -oh. And at this point, she literally like swings at me with a fist, not even a slap, like a full on <laughs> fist. So I, I catch her arm before it connects. And she went, Nani? <laughs> and I like put my hand on her right shoulder and I shoved. You shoved your mother I, over? I did. She was <laughs> literally swinging on me, like trying to beat the hell out of me. Did you hear like so, anime battle music in your head? No, at that point I was uncultured and I wasn't watching oh. anime by then, I don't think. Um, Not even Naruto? No. Not so, even One Piece? No. When did you start reading One Piece? Never. Oh. <laughs> Currently I haven't. confused you for the friend I don't have. So, so anyways... I, I shove her backwards and obviously like when I it wasn't like a hard shove meant to like push her down It was just meant to get her away, but you forgot that the stairs were right behind no, her. No, 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 no So she keeps swinging and I literally <laughs> just like leave the room. I'm like you're being unreasonable Like I don't know what is wrong with you. You're a psycho. Yeah, so then I walk into my room I shut the door to calm down, you know to get ready to leave for school and I hear the front door close and I hear the, the car start up, and they left me Without there. you? So, as a, as a high school kid, you know, I'm like, oh, I, I didn't want to go to school anyways. This is awesome. <laughs> so I, I should push my mom over every morning. <laughs> so I literally just stayed home. But, uh... I must have missed you so much that day. Our, our lunch table must have been so empty. Dude, I missed, like, months and months of school when I was in high school. I don't know how <laughs> we ever had time at school that that's why out. i always had to make friends with the foreign exchange students because my <laughs> only fucking friend was staying home all day <laughs> so yeah um we we did not really speak for quite a while after that um because that was the first time i had ever like laid a hand on my mom to be fair she did she did come at you first you're yeah. allowed to hit a woman back if it, she comes at it you it was it was like Fist curled, like she was coming at me, <laughs> wanting blood, man. Like I wasn't gonna just let her hit me. I don't care if you're my mom or not. Like, I don't did, get was there not the any face. Baileys to put in her coffee that morning? What was she so strung up about that she wants to <sighs> attack her son? 
you know, being an adult now, I know she probably had like a, a lot of financial issues and a lot of other things, but if you're going to let it get to the extent where you're going to fist fight your kids, <laughs> you probably deserve to get pushed. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle, we, we recently finished our Malcolm binge, and at no point do those parents ever lay a hand on their kids. At never, ever. And those kids... It sounds like we're about as bad as you, so <laughs> it sounds like Lois is a better mother than your mom, Biggs. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, I mean... And yeah, Lo- yeah. Lois is famous for being a psycho bitch mom. <laughs> Some of those psychotic screams, like when we're watching and like Lois is on a screaming tirade and the kids are just sitting there like staring Boys! at the person. I told them, I'm like, these are giving me PTSD flashbacks, <laughs> man, because that's literally how it was. But yeah, that's uh, that's one piece of big story. I guess one I, piece. I regret, I regret everything I said. Oh. Um, but yeah, so I'll have to think of more for another big story segment. Okay, well, that pretty good story, Biggs. And Almost got KO'd by my mom. I understand that you also have a pathetic list entry for the week, and I figured we should just tackle that real quick before we talk about yeah. we- Wheel of Cursed Meals three and four. It's not a terribly long. Uh, uh, Penis? Sure. Okay. So, I feel like I have to deal with this way too many times with some of my friends who come to me for advice. Yeah. How ha, many ha, friends? Who comes to you for advice? For real? How many friends do you have? Like, so, first of all, you, you have to have at least 20 friends for even one okay. of them to be pathetic enough to come to you for advice. How, okay, do you I'll have a Rolodex them, of friends? I'll stop calling them friends. And how and about call t- them, teenagers like, on Discord? Well, I barely even talk to them. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, rip my nigga heartsy, rip I, my nigga pee. I'll put it this way. I, I call basically anybody I talk to on any semi-regular basis, I call a friend. But like, What are you, Monkey D. Luffy? You know what? Just for the sake of it, I'm just going to call them friends. I don't care. I'm not going on this. Anyways, the amount of people that have come to me and like asking for advice on this, and it just irritates me to no end. If somebody is being toxic to you in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable and you come to the consensus that you don't want to talk to them anymore, just block them. It's literally that easy. If you're being, whether it may be bullied or whatever, if somebody is treating you poorly and you don't like it, literally block them. Now, how do we define poorly? What is this behavior that needs to be blocked? So it even goes a bit further than that. We'll say it. It's, um, somebody will come to me with an issue about a friend and they're saying, you know, there's, there's a lot of history of this person being a lot of big story, uh, manipulative to me. Uh, they're being, um, like obsessive, you know, they're picking on me and stuff like this. Now, first of all, I'm curious about manipulative because I'm familiar with manipulation in terms of survivor. Yeah, because you're like the pro No, no, like Big Brother, Survivor, like you're manipulating somebody because you want to defeat them in a game. What kind of everyday normal life manipulation is taking place? Because if you ask me, that would just be somebody wants you to do something that you don't want to do. Yeah, basically. So then uh, just say, I don't want to do that. But they okay. So so here's here's the pathetic list entry. People who are way too complacent with things, they never speak up and say how things make them feel, whether it's manipulation or bullying or whatever X Y and Z. The people who just sit there and take it, and when their friends are begging with them, please don't let this happen anymore. Stop talking to them, block them, do whatever you need to do to get out of the situation. And they are just so hell-bent on trying to rekindle this friendship, even though they're being treated like garbage. They just are complacent about the whole thing. It's so irritating. Because it's like, you could fix this so easily by stop talking to them, telling them you don't like that because they never confront them because they don't want to upset their feelings. Are you serious? This person's manipulating you but to do things you don't want to do. Can you can you give me one example of manipulation in this relationship? I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it it even gets to the point of sexual manipulation. Uh, are these adults? Yes. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh man, my uh, my fellow 25 year old wants to engage in coitus with me. Oh, how manipulative! No, it... what are they doing? 
I, I'm trying to take notes so I can do this to other people. No. So what am I supposed to do to manipulate somebody into sex? Because I'm, so far it's not working. <laughs> Our fans just, need to I'm know these gonna, tips and tricks. I'm just going to leave it at this. If you're being way too complacent in life and letting people walk over you, at, it, it comes to a point in time where it's literally only your fault. I am no longer going to be mad You're at the other blame person. The victim? Yes, I will. Because it comes to a point in time when you have so many people on your side supporting you, telling you, you need to stop talking to this person. They are way too toxic for you. They just keep bringing you back down to this low, depressed mindset because this is all they're doing to you. If you keep sticking with that because you feel bad for them or you don't want to hurt feelings, then that's where it becomes your fault. You're willingly staying in this situation that you can very easily get out of. Something like that happened to me literally today. I went to BioLife to uh, sell my plasma. And after you finish like the, the 700 milliliters of plasma, they pump you full of saline. And the old lady uh, phlebotomist, or I don't know what the fuck those people are called. They're not nurses because you don't go to nursing school to stick a needle in somebody and then take it back out. But like this old lady, uh, whatever the fuck they're called, she started taking my needle out while the saline was still being pumped into me. So like she clearly was just not paying attention. And I, I had plenty of lead time. I knew exactly the mistake she was making and I could have easily said, hey, wait, stop. The machine's not done pumping me full of shit yet. But I just didn't say anything. I wanted to see what would happen. <laughs> and she pulls it out and then just cold saline comes all over my arm, all over the seat. <laughs> and she's so sorry. And I'm like, hmm, you know what? I could have stopped this from happening, but it, I was just too curious to intervene. Yeah. And I guess I will add too, I'll, I'll s make it more specific. W when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about in person because people will be like, oh, Biggs, you know, people get stuck in abusive relationships and they're too scared of being beaten. Yeah, beat. look at me and Biggs. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> what I'm specifically talking about is people who are engaging in these online friendships and relationships who get stuck in these loops of complacency. Literally, they can't do anything to you physically. Just block them. Yeah. What are they going to do? Or That's if, why I, if you don't want them to have the sweet sense of satisfaction by blocking them on Twitter, you can just mute them and they will never know and you'll never have to hear from them again. Yeah. So that's my entry is people who uh, are just too complacent and will not stand up for themselves in these online relationships. Literally, it's your fault. <laughs> okay. just, just stop talking to them, block them. And that solves it. Okay, here's my pathetic list entry of the week. People who have My Hero Academia Monopoly in the backseat of their car parked outside my house. <laughs> Biggs, okay. are you, are so, you, is this you? Technically, yes, it is me. <laughs> Why do you the have that? So the reason I have that in my backseat is... Because um, you were playing it? I'll, I'll do game nights at other friends' house and... I literally have a, like, the closet in our hallway is full of board games. Like, literally top to bottom, completely stacked Who full spent all the sorts 30 bucks games. on My Hero Academia so, Monopoly? That was Bry Guy's ah. purchase. <laughs> but the reason why I have it is because I did a game night at um, a friend of mine's. And usually I just bring a ton of whatever games just so, so we have a selection apples to apples they have like two, cards against humanity because they have like two or three card games i'm like you know what board games are fun too so i'll big grab bang theory a monopoly stack. I'll monopoly grab, junior i'll grab a huge stack of games and uh, shrek monopoly that version of monopoly is actually the best condition monopoly we have Okay. because we have like five monopolies but all the other ones are like missing half the stuff out of them <laughs> So that's the newest, uh, most complete set we have. So, so that's why I grabbed that one. Do each gimmick version of Monopoly, I assume the, the playable pieces represent the franchise that it comes yeah. from? So you could like get your Shrek pieces and your My Hero Academia pieces yeah. and just have a, a whole potpourri of characters to choose yeah. from. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny because like the, the My Hero one has Shrek like, versus Naruto. It has like little um, metal figures of the people from My Hero. We have a supernatural set. Which oh has, my like, fuck! That's even worse. Line. Why would you admit that? <laughs> these are Bry guys, by the okay. way. He's the one that spent thirty bucks a piece on these. Uh, what other ones do we have? I think. Well, we have like the Cheaters Edition, which is actually a lot of fun. And, um, oh, am I in that one? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, 
Uh, basically, with the Monopoly Cheaters Edition, it like gives you different like cheats that you can do in the game, like stealing from the bank and stealing. Oh, properties. it's not the the MTV show Cheaters where they catch yeah. people cheating. It's yeah. something else. So. What's funny about it is it like encourages you to try and do these cheats and if you pull them off you get like more bonuses. So like it'll say um, if you steal X amount of dollars from the bank without anybody else noticing, you'll get this bonus. And like but so you have to admit that you did it at some you, point. Okay, so here's the thing, you have to do it during your turn and then once it starts the next person's turn if nobody catches you, then you announce, "Hey, I did it." Okay. And then you get the bonus. So that's really fun. We have is, like there's gotta others. be a, there's, got like there four. must be a survivor monopoly where you can play as Boston Rob. Probably we could look on eBay. I'm sure there is. And I hate Monopoly, but yeah, we have like six editions and nobody ever plays because Good. nobody likes playing with me. Monopoly's a shitty game. It's fun for like Monopoly Junior, like on an Xbox 360, is the only decent incarnation of the game. If I have to actually get the board game and the pieces, it is yeah. horrible. I have to like beg people to play board games anymore. We have like so many and nobody wants to play them ever. But I honestly really like like card games, board games, anything like, like that. Give us your top five. Top five board games of all time. Board games? Board games. Okay. I I like Monopoly. Number five. I like Risk. This is not I, a top five list. Number five. Supernatural Monopoly. <laughs> Are you a big fan of all 18 seasons of Supernatural? Um, I really like Balderdash. I like Sequence. What's, what, what is Sequence? Uh, sequence is... It's a board and it has um, like playing cards on it, but it's like uh, laid out into grids. So then you have playing cards and you play a card and you put a little token on whatever card that represents on the board. And basically it's like you're trying to get five of these chips in a row. It's like basically like connect four, but laying down. That's your second favorite board game? It, it's fun though, because like you play in teams and like you go around, um, you take turns, but you can't talk to your teammate to like strategize. And then there's like, uh, there's Joker, or no, there's one eyed and two eyed jacks, which let you like put free spaces and then one lets you like take away pieces. And it, it's, it's a lot more fun than it sounds. Like <laughs> a lot of people I have to talk into playing it. And once they play it, they actually really enjoy it. Ball Number <clears throat> one, eels and escalators. Actually, I would if I had a salt like a real version. I'd play it all the time. But on <laughs> Tabletop Simulator on Steam, they have eels and escalators. They do, and I I get so many people to play that with me, and they're like, "This looks dumb. It's like shoots and ladders." I'm like, "But it's eels." It's and escalators. from SpongeBob. Exactly. How old are these people? Ten years old. They've never seen SpongeBob. Well, I mean, most of them probably have seen it, but not to the extent where they would know like, where we, these little gimmicks we, like we do. We've seen the reruns so, 50 <laughs> times. So, like, but we always have a good time Eels. when people start playing. But the other one I was going to tell you was Balderdash. That one's actually a lot of fun. And what it is is there's, like, a bunch of uh, vocabulary words that, like, nobody uses, but they're, like, actual words. And what it is, everybody has to write down, like, their guess of what it means. <laughs> or or write down what they think they could trick other people into picking. So it's like so it's, fibbage. It's like fibbage, yes. And then the person who reads the card also writes the real definition down, but in their own words to try and trick them into not picking it. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds like fun, actually. Oh, it's great fun. Like uh, I love playing that with tons of people, but I think it's like minimum of three people to play, so we're kind of screwed. Well, speaking of <laughs> fibbage, I feel like... Like Jackbox games and other things like that that you can play digitally have kind of killed the board game. I mean, I know board games yeah. are now more sophisticated than ever, but well, also if I'm having a party, we're going to play fucking Jackbox. We're not going to pull out Monopoly. Yeah, that's fair. And also, it's it's hard for at least us to get more than one other person to hang out with <laughs> us. So <laughs> there's not many good two-player board games. Yeah. Well, should we... Speaking of horrible games that nobody should play, should we talk about Wheel of Cursed Meals 3 and the upcoming Wheel of Cursed Meals 4? Yeah, probably. People somehow were confused, even after watching Wheel of Cursed Meals 3, about when you said you landed on a white space and it was one of the most terrible things you've ever done. Even after watching the video, people still did not know what you were referring to. Which, of Hulk? course, was the ramen the, powder and the mayo. mayo and ramen powder. Yeah, yeah. I guess... It, it, it's literally white. Like, yeah. the, the space on the wheel is white. 
I, I guess they you did it so <laughs> easily they didn't realize how difficult it was for you. But I would oh, imagine really? it's so just me gagging and like choking on it for the next twenty minutes wasn't enough for them to know. Maybe they didn't bad. watch the patchy cut. They didn't see all. Well, of even the pain. on the film, like when we were when we were going for your spin, I was still choking on it, like. <laughs> <laughs> What was so bad about it that makes it as almost as bad as the the chocolate that you had in episode one? Think was... about think about it this way. Just imagine eating a spoonful of mayo for one. I've done that before. It's not that appetizing, right? I mean, it, now, it could use some tuna, but yeah. Now think about eating a spoonful of just literal beef powder <laughs> that's like concentrated flavoring like bouillon or whatever it's called. Yeah. It's awful. Now mix the two together. Something that's already not very good on its own mixed with this disgusting condensed flavor. <laughs> and it's not... I should have let you put more mayo. I should have. That would have helped it so much. But it was, so it was like it swallowing was, sandpaper? It was like literally 50-50 combined. And yes, it was like sandpaper. <laughs> so when I'm like trying to quote unquote chew it, I'm literally like grinding the powder in my teeth. Oh, what? just swallow it. I couldn't. It literally starts sucking the the saliva out of my mouth. Uh, it was so it's too dry. dry. Yeah. Even in the mayo, it was still dry. <laughs> so like I would like, like bite down and like there'd be a pocket of just powder in the mayo and it would like pop into the back of my mouth and suck all the the saliva out so i was like choking on it well biggs the critical reception is is <clears throat> so so praiseworthy people are saying episode three is by far the best of the trilogy and evidently we converted some new fans because episodes one and two each got like a ten thousand view bump after episode three came out so a lot of people are really into this stuff, and I'm thinking, well, we got to fast track episode four ASAP. But uh, before I read off the the potential menu for the next episode, do you have any other things you want to talk about from uh, episode three? I guess did you watch my gay porn live stream by any chance? I I did watch it after the fact. Now I am kind of bummed that I I didn't watch it live because I didn't get to see the the chat's interaction with you so like watching it without the chat was kind of yeah lackluster but yeah. it was still funny to be fair i was also not looking at the chat very much because i had to watch gay porn i just noticed when they were <clears throat> spamming shit and i had to ban them for it but otherwise i my eyes and ears were focused on the majesty of the pornography yeah i feel like if you're ever going to upload vods to like a different account like that you should put the chat on the screen that way. I don't want to get banned for what my retard fans say. Yeah, but if it's going up on a random channel, they're not going to ban it because yeah, it's that's not monetized. True. That's true. But yeah, it was it was funny. I am kind of bummed that the uh, bareback breeding video did not get more than like five minutes of watch time. Yeah, I, Biggs got to choose the video I begin with and he chose just two very, very gangster rapper looking black men. Very muscular and uh, kind of thuggish looking. Uh, just, just sucking on each other's dicks and stuff, you know, classic stuff. But the whatever shitty porn website it was on, it kept crashing. So after five minutes, I had to yeah. move on. Like I kept forgetting. I guess it wasn't so much forgetting as not wanting to look up gay porn to find you a video. You were I, so excited. I, I, I thought you had a good one in mind. No, it was all for the for the LOLs, lol. But uh. Yeah, so when you messaged me and said, hey, what's what's the video? I'm like, oh, yeah, I should probably actually look that up. <laughs> so I Last minute big. I literally Googled worst, most disgusting gay porn. And that was the first thing that, that came Nikado up. Nikado Avocado didn't pop up? That was the first one that popped up. So you know what? I copied and pasted it. I watched like maybe two seconds. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> this is already terrible. Wow. And I sent it to you and I waited the day. And of course, it was only five minutes of watch. Time, yeah. and I'm like, well, that was kind of sad. Yeah, uh, I had a lot of fun watching the Gachi Muchi stuff. Uh, I, I guess a lot of people were disappointed that I spent an hour and a half watching two muscular naked men wrestle and then fuck each other, but that, it counts as <laughs> gay porn to me, so... Yeah, true. And so, it also is like a famous gay porn meme, so I thought it would be appropriate to do, since I'm me. What was the worst thing on the wheel for you this time around? Oh, on the wheel?! Uh, I mean, I didn't get any points, so I guess everything. Yeah, but what was, like, the worst one that, like... I feel like I could have done the ZZZ Quill, and it might be making a return in a smaller form. I think the bottle we chose was too big, and 
They sell half-sized bottles, so I think I can still do that because I definitely consumed over half before I vomited. Uh, cat food I just did not want to do and I couldn't even begin to chew or swallow because I knew as soon as I got like cat food stuck between my teeth by chewing it, I, I was going to be dead. It, it The smell is so rancid yeah. to me. What's funny is I think you honestly could have done like the chicken and gravy one, but since I got to choose <laughs> and I picked the uh, sardines and whatever, that was like, what did you And like? I didn't even tell you this, but lately I've been trying to find foods that are healthier, like just foods that are jam-packed with nutrition that are super easy to eat. So like lately I've been eating, uh, eating uh, uh, hard-boiled eggs every morning because... Uh, where else am I going to get vitamin D? I don't go fucking outside. And one of the suggestions was the canned sardines. Evidently, they're very healthy for you. And they're actually not bad. Well, I, I tried them a few weeks before we filmed The Wheel 3. And I, I just threw it away. I took a bite and said, this is fucking horrendous. And I threw it away. <laughs> so I, I, I was heartbroken when you chose the sardine flavored cat food. Like, how the fuck did he know this is my kryptonite? I couldn't even eat it in human consumption form. And this is fucking oh, cat food. No. <laughs> yeah, not good. Uh, sardines are terrible. You like them? I didn't say they were good. I just said they're not bad. I, I couldn't even swallow it, like, dude. My my stepdad is Polish. <laughs> sticks to his uh polish heritage with their weird foods that they eat and he used to get like the little cans of uh sardines and one time he's like here try one of these and he's like all right you know why not if i throw up it's whatever <laughs> so i i ate it and i was like you know this isn't too bad so i ate a couple more I'm like yeah they're not they're not terrible granted i haven't eaten one since and that was like probably 10 years ago at least so maybe now I would gag on it and throw up, but I don't remember it being terrible. It, I'm sure plenty of people out there eat sardines every day for every meal. Some people get on their pizzas. I I, I got plenty of comments saying, saying, oh, I eat whole lemons <clears throat> every single day. Fuck you, monkey man. So I'm sure there's a guy who eats sardines nonstop all day, every day, and that's fine. <laughs> uh, not for me. In terms of the lemon, I, I was enthusiastically attempting it. Every time I vomited, other than maybe the cat food, my body was rejecting what I was putting <laughs> into it. It's, it's mind over matter. My mind was willing, my body, to, to not quote Reggie Anime Man or Reggie Nintendo. My body is not ready. And what about the crickets? Crickets? Uh, I could have done that. My, my big flaw there was that I wanted to go faster. Uh, if I kept going the Biggs pizza roll method of one at a time, I could have done it so easily. But you guys talked me into trying like five at a time, and that's the exact moment that my body yeah. stopped. See, I knew you were going to be able to do it if you did it one at a time. That's why I kept pushing for the multiple. Right. Because I'm like, good strategy. It works. He's going to throw up you if got he puts me. more than one of those in his mouth. So I need to get him to try it. And sure enough, the one time that you like did a pinch of it and you like put your mouth, and I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Easy. And, but then you made the biggest mistake of your lifetime and tried to down the entire yeah, but, thing at see, once. It wasn't like the it wasn't like my challenge to so my point. It was trying to steal. And if I wanted to steal, I didn't want to sit there and munch for 40 minutes, you know? You wanted like, to just make a terrible just, mistake. Just one and done it, see if I could do it. If not, I throw up and it's fine. You at really thought you be would funny. be able to? You didn't at trust least, my palate when I said it was it not be possible. Funny for the video if I just did it all at once. Nobody wants to sit and watch Biggs do the same thing twice in one video, eating one at a time. I can easily edit out the boring shit. I did it plenty. If you saw the patchy cut, you saw what shit got cut out. <laughs> Very fucking boring day. So, yeah. Um, I think the only other thing I wanted to say about the wheel was the uh, pickle juice and hot dog water. <laughs> Uh-oh. The fact that it was spicy pickle juice and I was... Uh, I was bamboozled by you and picked it because I thought you had regular pickles. That jar has been in my fridge for, I think, a year now. You, you've you had plenty of time to inspect the pickles in my fridge. Well, when I hear pickle juice, I assume it's regular. The, the little spice things that were in that, when I chugged, <laughs> like, they were stuck in my teeth. And, like, as I was drinking, they are like, making their way around <laughs> and went into my gut. And, like, literally, I think that, that, like boiling sensation in my gut is what really made the rest of the day just not good yeah hey we both 
We both made it to Texas Roadhouse after, and we had a pleasant meal while Patchy laughed at us. Yeah. Uh, it was not a fun day. Well, do you want to plan out our next not fun day? Sure. I'm thinking Wheel 4, we should try to film it sometime in July for an early August release. Uh, a lot less of downtime between wheels than before, only because now there's a newfound enthusiasm for the series. I think after episode two, people were kind of down on it and didn't want to see it again. And episode three, I think we revitalized it. So let's uh, let's disappoint them again with episode four. <laughs> really just destroy everything, all the momentum we had going. Wow, so people don't like seeing Biggs get zero points, but they do enjoy watching Monkey get zero points. Well, because I got zero points attempting everything. I think that's the big difference. But I have a list of ideas for Wheel 4. We're going to go through these one by one. And uh, if Biggs <clears throat> is really against something, that almost guarantees it's going to make it on. Biggs, are you familiar with those those novelty sodas that taste like fucking boogers and grass and stupid shit? Yep. So I'm thinking we take the nastiest one of those we can find and blend it with sushi. Good idea? That's definitely a curse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? Good idea. Okay. It's on the wheel. That's like a, a guaranteed loss, and I think having a few of those is like pretty funny. <laughs> I could do that one, I think. Booger soda mixed with sushi? I, I eat my boogers could... all the time, dude! <laughs> it's the soda part that's gonna get me. Oh man, straight to you my thighs. You couldn't even down cat food, and you think you can down blended sushi with booger pop? Yeah, I mean, it has sugar and, sh and stuff in it. It's like... It's not gonna help. Well... Uh, mini bottle of ZZZ Quill, instead of doing the full 16 ounce bottle, 8 ounce bottle. That way, if people want to see Mumkey get high on sleeping medication, you thought I was high last time? I vomited most of that up. Let's see what happens when I actually keep it in my belly for a while. Yeah, true. Uh, oh, here's one. Monkey biscuits. Of, uh, uh, like, two or three years ago in Monkey's mailbag, somebody sent me literal biscuits that you give to monkeys and they were as dry as the crickets just horrendous i could not eat one so i'm gonna buy more monkey biscuits off of amazon and we can see what our monkey brothers eat on a daily well, basis i'm glad you're gonna buy new ones because the thought of eating them from like three years ago <laughs> opened no, i threw them away scary. i don't have them anymore so you want to eat monkey biscuits sure here's another genre of of cursed meal i want to uh, partake in we all know that art supplies for children have to be edible because children are fucking stupid and they'll eat stuff. That's why we had the crayon melt, because crayons technically have to be edible. Children are stupid. So I've got a few ideas from that line of thinking. Uh, eat a tube of Play-Doh. Yeah, that's doable. Yeah, okay. Drink Elmer's glue. What do you think of that? Like like one of the little bottles? I, I don't know how much. I just, I want the image of, of the, the white bottle with the cow on it and you're like holding it above your head and squeezing the glue into your mouth and we can see it pouring down into your mouth. Yeah, I mean, why not? As long as it's non-toxic, I don't Yeah, I don't we, care. we just have to figure out how much. Will it be like, just squeeze it non-stop for 10 seconds and then swallow everything? If it gets, if you miss your mouth, it's just going to look like a cum shot. <laughs> I mean, people are going to do edits anyway, so why not? Okay, oh, here's an easy one. Uh, a toothpaste and orange juice Slurpee. That sounds delectable. Yeah. I wish we had face cam because Biggs is, is not happy about some of his <laughs> choices. Um, how do we make that a Slurpee? Do we just mix it with ice in the blender? Yeah, I guess. Okay. I assume toothpaste is something you're allowed to digest, right? I mean, you put it in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, blast from the past. The the two broke girls smoothie. The very first time Monkey and Biggs were in an anime review together. You remember that, Biggs? Oh, with the bleach and the... Well, yeah, well bleach was not actually in it. it that was a trick. I, I... Wasn't there, like, broken glass in there? No, the the two broke girls smoothie, as I remember it, I, I pretended to put it in bleach, but it was actually just Gatorade that was the same color as bleach, but we can just cut that part out because we're not actually going to drink fucking bleach on our stupid show. But the 
neither one of us could drink the smoothie as it was, regardless of the bleach. What was in it? It had uh, beets and I don't remember the other stuff, but but it's just an idea just based on stuff we've done before. Uh, maybe people can suggest something to replace the bleach that will not literally kill us. I recently, Biggs, I don't know if you saw this, I posted all four episodes of a series I did with our old friend Frid called Cooking Time with Frid. Yeah, and it brought on another whole resurgence of Bring Back Frid, so I'm... <laughs> I even put the hashtag oh boy. Bring Back Frid on the video, so... Uh, did you watch those? Have you ever even seen those before? Yeah, I watched them when you originally made them. Big fan? You mm -hmm. like Frid? I mean, it was funny watching him choke on it. Like, <laughs> putting the whole egg in his mouth and like... Well, some people want us to bring back some of Frid's recipes for the wheel. So we have Frid coffee, which is a, a blended combination of coffee grounds, chocolate milk, barbecue sauce, and salt. Oh boy. <laughs> you want to do that? Yeah. We've also got the Frid egg sandwich, which is bread, eggshells, and syrup. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, here's one that I know Biggs has been really, really upset about, and he doesn't want us to do it, so I'm going to force us to put it on the wheel. At Walmart, in the booze, the liquor section, I was perusing one day, and I found something called Moonshine Pickles. It's a $25 jar of pickles that are, I guess, what would you call it, marinating? What do they call that when a pickle's just sitting in... I would call it pickled. <laughs> So they're pickled in moonshine. It's an alcoholic treat. You eat the pickle, you get drunk, you drink the, the whatever the fuck the juice is in. Yeah. So I thought, let's let's take that and blend the whole thing up, blend up the pickles in the moonshine, and then drink a glass of it. Biggs' two favorite things, pickles and booze. Can't wait. I really hope you get it. So You're I really going to end you. your sobriety to drink moonshine pickles? I mean, it's for a point. We'll see where we're at. If yeah. I'm ahead by a large margin, I won't do it. But if you're like neck and neck, I'm going to do it. Now, here's the last one I have uh, in my my think tank. What about a glass of canola oil? You know what that will do to you, right? No. That's well, like worse than laxatives. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a yes? Like, I'm. is it canola oil? I, I, I thought you could think, drink oil because you cook with it, so why think, not drink it? I think uh, it's like a home remedy for women to drink canola oil to like induce labor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one of us can give birth, that's fine. <clears throat> so yeah, I guess uh, it's going to be an interesting wheel for. Yeah, so that's like 11 of them, and I imagine the other spots I, I be... can't imagine anybody saying any of those are too easy like they claimed <laughs> for this one. They said wheel three had too many easy options. I disagree completely. I think wheel three had the perfect medium. That's why they say it's the best episode. It, it had the hard shit and the easy shit kind of... Uh, it, it, it was fair. It was difficult, but fair. Yeah, and a lot of people were like... Well, I can't believe you put baking chocolate on there. And like, it didn't even get spun anyways, all right? You can't even judge it off of that. You and have to judge and who off. eats baking chocolate? It's disgusting. Yeah. I don't see you fuckers eating it. So, one guy who commented, oh, all this shit on the wheel this time was easy. I replied, okay, motherfucker, you post a video eating all this shit. No response. I win. Get fucked. I would love to see you do all this shit little, you said that we should. do you know he's like doing this big production of it. Uh -oh. <laughs> Him eating all of it and uh -oh. you get it in like a month. Egg on my face. I'll be so embarrassed. <clears throat> so yeah, I think that'll fill out the wheel because then we'll, to fill up the other spaces, we'll have pick three blender, which we still have not landed on. I know. It's crazy. Three wheels in. We haven't. And that's the one it. I'm craving the most. The most creativity, the most uh, strategy, the most horrific. I can already see it now. It's going to be the moonshine pickles with um, <laughs> canola oil, canola oil. <laughs> and, and, the, and the coffee, the uh, Frid coffee. Oh, not Elmer's glue? No, Frid's coffee would be <laughs> not worse. Not sushi and soda? Sushi and booger soda? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I also want to bring back the gamer smoothie from last time. I'm just going to trick you. Lay epic ruse. I'm going to start eating boogers from now until the wheel. <laughs> I don't think the soda tastes like actual <laughs> boogers. I don't, how do you test that? I don't know. I mean, I guess there's a pretty easy way I guess to test it. it but... They go up to a three-year-old. Hey, eat a booger. What does that taste like? Describe it. And then they just uh, make that into a soda. Tastes like boogers. Well, okay. <clears throat> so that's all we got. Yep. 
Let us know in the comments if you like those picks and if you have any suggestions to fill up the last couple spots. But finally, Biggs, we have some unfinished business. During a live stream episode of this very show, we had a fan named Red Moth who donated $100 for me to read the first chapter of his fan fiction sequel to my book, The Triflers. And I've been holding it off for a special occasion, and that is today. And I figured since he donated a hundred bucks through uh, YouTube, uh, and Biggs got half the money, it's only fair that he also has to listen to this shit. So I'm just gonna read the chapter right now for everybody to hear, instead of just reviewing it. Now Biggs and I can both give our feedback to this young, aspiring author. How does that sound? If I give my feedback, will you give my time back? He already paid you 40 bucks. That's pretty good. Anyway, this is The Triflers 2 Postal Men by Red Moth 27 Now, I, I was looking through it, and very interestingly, he has a table of contents. There are 11 chapters, and the, the lengths of the chapters are, let, let's just say, very <laughs> versatile. I'm not going to judge good or bad because I have not read all of them, but I found it interesting that some of these 11 chapters are like three pages long, and some of them are like 70 pages long, which, I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm sure Hemingway had a 70 page chapter followed by a three page chapter. I'm sure it happens all the time. I'm not going to judge it again. It's his creative that, vision. <clears throat> what that kind of reminds me of is like, <clears throat> when you're talking about something and then something else like crosses your mind and you go off on a tangent which is longer than the original <laughs> conversation uh, no I mean uh, chapter 4 is as long as the all the chapters preceding it up to that point which I mean whatever it's fine I mean uh, stupid Mario Brothers uh, season 5 all the episodes were 8 minutes and then the finale episode was 2 fucking hours long <laughs> uh, yeah i would probably like divide up the content to make the episodes a little more even but you know what rich alvarez you do you and red moth is doing him that's rich coming from you true so let's read uh, chapter 0 the recording of 955 oh uh, th there was also a um, a warning a, a disclaimer this book isn't professionally edited due to me being poor. Uh, I don't know why you can't check your own grammar and spelling because of uh, your your income. But Usually okay. they have like a button that you can click that will check your spelling. Yeah, they, they have like a little red squiggly line that you can right click and fix your There's shit. There's even free websites these days where you can copy and paste your like thesis for college and it will yeah. edit it for you. Yeah, I have never spent a dime on professional editing for my my work in my entire life that's i mean you could do it yourself you're the writer anyway uh so be ready to see some grammar errors and typos though it shouldn't take away from the experience too much and i've done my best to get rid of them okay let's see if uh, in this chapter zero if we run into any issues like that chapter zero the recording of 955 police transcripts May 7th, 2018, student voice recorder plus survivor testimony of the Postalman Massacre. Beginning of recording, 9.20 a.m. Good morning, second period. Uh, okay, I think there's a period after that, I can't tell. Is, is there a period between that sentence and the next one? When he says, good morning, second period, it's nice to see you? No. Okay, there's no, okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. It's just the first sentence of the book. It's fine. <laughs> he, he's. Let me remind you, he's poor. He can only pay us $100 to read this. He's clearly very poor. Uh, I don't want to shit on him too much because he did pay us and he did write a sequel to my book. I just... Whatever. Let's keep going. It's nice to see you. You know, today is the day that Peter uh, Minuit purchased Manhattan Island from the American Indians. Mr. Vinci is visibly anxious. You could say that the island used to be Wolf City, but now it's a human mega metropolis. Well, away today we'll be doing the usual upfront issue. Mr. Vinci walks around with and hands out upfront magazine to the class along with a question form 35 minutes later into the recording. The recent Pew survey found that more than 90% of U.S. Muslims say they're proud to be an American. Mr. Vinci looks at his phone and stands up. But the study also identified an... Dot, dot, dot. 
That's enough, George. I would like to speak now. Have you ever heard about the concept of violence begets violence? So there are there are multiple different speakers here. Like you, you have quotes of the teacher talking and then quotes of one of the students talking. Traditionally in fiction, when a, a different person is speaking, you start a new paragraph. But so far, this is all one uninterrupted paragraph. This might be a stylistic choice. It might have been stylistically designed to be that way. I'm just I'm just pointing that out. It's a little confusing to have multiple people talking back and forth with quotations all in the same giant yeah, paragraph. And generally, you would think after like two or three times of them going back and forth, you re like state who's talking that we don't yeah. lose track. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's happening here. Uh, no, but but somebody with a large <clears throat> IQ like me can infer who is speaking Biggs. You have to... To be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand the Postalman. So, please stop with your low IQ critical takes. Uh, da, 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 da. That's enough, George. I would like to speak now. Have you heard the about the concept of violence begets violence? That is actually a line from three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I have that movie poster up on my wall right now. A couple kids raise their hands. Don't raise your hand, it's rhetorical. The saying means that if you commit violence, more violence will happen. That violence in the human spirit of war that fuels it is eternal. Here's another saying, rebel without a cause, one who fights an authority with no good reason. Maybe he does it for the fun of it. Maybe he does it because he believes he's doing good. But often it's a reason that doesn't sound like a reason. When the causeless rebel is combined with the spirit of war, the rebel becomes the most dangerous. He does not fear death, he seeks it. He wishes to kill and destroy as much as possible for no reason. Parts of Mr. Vinci's class look visibly uncomfortable. Kim, Alex, Matthew, John, Cameron, and Charlie, I would like to talk to you about your homework. Mr. Vinci took all of them to the classroom's spacious storage closet. They all wore blue cardigans. Confusion and... With an ampersand for and. Confusion, ampersand, and... He wrote it, confusion, ampersand, and then the word and after it. Uh, so just to read it out phonetically, confusion and and worry spread through the class. Uh, no punctuation to end the paragraph, and we're finally on to the second paragraph of the story. What the fuck... What the fucks is going on? I don't know, man. Sean, have you been recording the entire class? Of course, man, I record every English class. I don't give a fuck that it, that our school bands recorders. Colleges, spelled C-O-L-L-A-G-E-S. Colleges do it, so why can't I? I guess so. I don't don't think that's what he meant, but uh, why can't I? Good point, Sean. Students start getting city emergency alerts on their phones of school shootings happening all throughout Littleton, Inglewood, downtown Denver, and Radford. Panic and fear started to settle in the class. What the hell is happening? There are active shooters everywhere. Calm down, Sahara. It's probably a new type of lockdown dr- FIRE! A massive spray of machine gun fire railed through the cheap wooden door of the storage closet into the bodies of many students. The door was opened and the survivors who ran heard the deafening combination of machine, semi-auto, and shotgun firearms firing from the classroom and other parts of the school. Vinci, I really liked your speech on the rebel with no cause. Fascinating. Thanks, Charlie. It's all yours from here. Here spelled H-E-A-R. We have enough ammo to kill this school six times over, even with our grand opening. No problem. Give all the credit to Spencer. Hey, Sean's little device is still recording. End of recording. At the end of the shooting, all classrooms were cracked open, both resource officers were killed, in total 657 students died, survivors 6, major orchestrators Spencer Sterling, Pavel Pasco, Charlie Haskett, Shane Wilson, Chase Stock, and Don Riano. And that's the end of Chapter Zero. Biggs, uh, how soon are you going to purchase your copy? To be honest, I don't think my brain retained any information that I collected because it was so disorganized. 
Um, probably never. I think that might be the most of that book I'll ever hear until, unless this becomes a a weekly reading on the podcast. Oh my god! <laughs> where we slowly read the whole. Wow, thing. The, the chapter four episode is going to take a while. <laughs> Uh, I have no issue with that. It, I mean, I don't think he wants us to give his whole book away. He's trying to sell this online, so I don't know if he wants us to do an audiobook of the entire thing. Uh, if he gives us permission, and if the audience at home wants to hear more, I guess we could read more of the chapters in the future. But I'm in a very tricky situation because this is one of my biggest fans. He adores my book so much that he wants to write his, his own sequel to it, and then he did write it. And then he paid us money to read it and review it. And unfortunately, it's just based on those three pages. It is not, it is not high work. It, I mean, it, it's just the, the grammar and spelling and millions of other obvious mistakes aside. It's just not, it's not higher than what I would consider to be like ninth grade level writing. And yeah. I, uh, the the way I was gonna describe it was like ninth grade uh, creative writing class. Yeah, yeah. Like that's, like that's probably how I could write currently because I haven't written anything since ninth grade. But uh, that's what it reminds me of is how I wrote when I was in ninth grade creative writing class. Yeah, and I I don't want to be. Oh man, he, he I was such a big fan and he shit all over my my masterpiece. But I think there's room for improvement. I, I'd say don't give up. Uh, clearly, this is a first draft, and first drafts do not care about if you're poor or not. You can uh, <laughs> you can't edit a blank page, but luckily you have a 300-page book that you can spend as much free time as possible editing and crafting and getting all of those obvious, not even uh, grammar, but also narrative issues kind of... Uh, kind of rolled out and fixed um i if if this opening chapter is supposed to be a transcript of a recording of a student in the class you can basically write it as if it's a play which is kind of what you're doing like when you describe that the teacher is uh, walking across the room you have it in parentheticals do that but also with the dialogue write it as if it's a play because this is a, a police transcript they wouldn't write it as if it's a a novel so like if, if rachel or whoever the fuck is talking have that name spelled out all caps and then uh colon and then the line of dialogue that way we won't be confused about who is speaking at any given time or maybe well, i thought you could infer who it is yeah well that was me being facetious <laughs> uh that would be my my first uh just it, it's very confusing to the reader and i've read it twice now and i'm still not entirely sure what the fuck i'm looking at uh if you want it to be a transcript write it like a transcript don't do a weird uh mix and match of transcript and like traditional narrative writing you, you can switch it up I, i'm sure that in the next chapter it will not be like that but from what we were paid to read it is not uh it leaves a lot to be desired, I guess. I don't want to be too mean again, because this is a literal teenager, so... Uh, Biggs, do you have any other thoughts? I mean, I I would uh, take his advice and go with that, because I have no education in this sense. Like, I went through high school English, obviously, but <clears throat> I didn't retain any of like the the story writing or any of that aspect. I didn't retain any of it, so I have no advice for you other than listen to what he's saying, because he, he knows what he's talking about. You you want the story to be a little <laughs> bit more grounded in in some form of reality. So for example, there you have a line that like, oh, there's there's active school shootings happening in four different places all at the same time right now. Like it's it's a little the dialogue is a little straight and uh, obvious and really not realistic or grounded at all especially if this is supposed to be a sequel to my book which i think is in a lot of ways more grounded like the school shooting in that book was a complete failure and he 
Like he, he didn't even get anybody really. So to have this be 657 students were killed, uh, like that's never happened in history. <laughs> I, I think that what Sandy Hook was like what 14 kids yeah it's not that mm-hmm. easy to to kill 657 I, kids I feel like a better way of describing like all the shootings going on at once is like maybe one of the kids is like seeing a news like something on the news where they're saying like multiple multiple reports of gunfire across whatever area you're in but like the fact that it was so specific like they knew exactly what was happening yeah. right when it happened it's like a little a little strange, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess if he gives us permission, maybe we this will be a re- recurring segment. We'll see what's going on <laughs> we in chapter be his, one. His free uh, pure editing for yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, I already pointed out all the words that he spelled wrong, so we can go fix those real quick. That's free of charge, my friend. And I think that's it for the Mumpkin and Big Show this week, huh, Biggs? Yeah, that's about all we got. You got any final uh, yuck em ups? You really want to crack everybody up with a great joke to end the show? Well, we're burning hot in my office right now. No, 